Mektubat, Imam Rabani, Ramatullahi al like First volume, 52nd letter. This letter, written to Sayyid Sheikh Farid, explains the wickedness of the nafs e amara the illness peculiar to it, and its medicine. We have been honored with reading your blessed letter, which you mercifully offered to your inferiors who pray for you. May Allah who ta'ala, for the sake of your great ancestor, Muhammad alayhi salam, increase your rewards, heighten your degree, enlarge your chest, which is a source of knowledge, and facilitate your work. May Allah who ta'ala keep our body and soul in his way and forgive the sins of those who say Amin after our prayer. Amin. You complain about the existence of evil-spirited people who want to sow discord and arouse instigation among your officials. My dear son, man's nafs e amara has the ambition to seize a post to come to the fore. Its only desire is to be the chief so that everybody will bow the heads before it. It does not like to need anybody or to be under someone else's command. These desires of the nafs mean that it wants to be a god, an idol, so that everybody will worship it. It wants to be a partner with Allah Ta'ala. Even more, the nafs is so base that it does not like partnership but wants to be the only ruler, or commander, with everybody under its command. Allah Ta'ala declares in a hadith could see, bear hostility against your nafs. For, your nafs is my enemy. This means to say that to strengthen the nafs, to gratify its desires to obtain property, positions, ranks, to be superior to everybody and to abhor everybody, would mean to help and strengthen this enemy of Allah Ta'ala. It should be realized what a terrible felony this is. Allah Ta'ala declares in a hadith could see. Greatness, superiority are peculiar to me. He who wants to be my partner in these two is my great enemy. Without pitying him, I shall fling him into hell fire. As is seen, such worldly wealths as property, rank, post, commandership and leadership should be desired not for following the nafs but for doing and practicing Allah's commands, for serving people and Muslims. It will be a great act of worship to desire them with this intention and to do them. The reason why Allah Ta'ala is hostile against the world, and why the world is so base, is because it causes the nafs to get its desires and because it strengthens the nafs. He who helps the nafs, which is Allah's enemy, will certainly be Allah's enemy. Our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, praised being poor, for poverty will not allow the nafs to obtain its desires. It will not listen to it. It will take its conceit out of it. The sending of prophets, Islam's commands and prohibitions are all intended to break the nafs, to crush it, and to prevent its excessive activities. The more Islam is obeyed, the fewer desires will the nafs have. It is for this reason that doing one command of Islam is more effective in annihilating the desires of the nafs than thousands of years of Riyazet and Mujakada done on one's own. Riyazet means not to do the desires of the nafs. Mujakada means to struggle against the nafs and to do what the nafs dislikes. In fact, those riyazats and mujikadas that are not suitable with Islam, augment the desires of the nafs. They cause it to become inordinate. The Brahmin priests in India and the magicians called Jukia went quite far into riyazat and mujahada, yet all their endeavors proved useless. In fact, they made the nafs even more thoroughgoing and outrageous. Irreligious people in India, call the highest of the four spiritual classes Brahman, which means the chief of the Hindu priestly caste of Brahman. Juki is the name, given to the dervishes of Hindu disbelievers.
for example, paying one cent of zakat, which Islam commands, to people prescribed by Islam, destroys the nafs very much more than giving thousands of gold coins as alms, or by doing favors on one's own. On the day of Bairam eat, eating and drinking instead of fasting, because Islam commands us to do so, is more useful than fasting for years. Performing the two rakats of morning prayer in Jamarat is better than performing supererogatory prayers all night till morning and then, falling asleep. And, not performing morning prayer in Jamarat. In short, unless the nafs is purified and wakes up from the dream of being a chief or being superior, it is impossible to escape perdition. Before going to endless death, it is necessary to consider saving the nafs from this illness. The blessed word La ilaha il Allah dispels all the mendacious idols inside and outside of man, and so it is the most useful, the most effective medicine for purifying the nafs. Great men of Tasawwuf chose this word for the purification of the nafs. Translation of a Persian couplet. Unless the road is cleaned with the broom of La, you will not attain the palace of Il Allah. If the nafs goes astray and becomes obstinate, it is necessary to refresh the Iman by expressing this word. Our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, stated, Renew your Iman by saying La ilaha il Allah. It is always necessary to say it, for the nafsi amr is always filthy. The following hadith sheriff states the virtues of this beautiful word of Tevad. If they put the earth and the heaven on one scale of the balance and this word of Tevad, on the other scale, certainly the scale on which this word is laid will weigh heavier. Sell lambs to those who are on the right way and to those who follow the footsteps of Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alaihi wa sallam.